In the summer of 1971, Stanford psychology professor Philip Zimbardo put out an ad in a local newspaper inviting young men to volunteer in a study on the psychological effects on prison life. Now dubbed the Stanford Prison Experiment, it remains one of the most famous, or infamous, psychological studies of all time. According to Zimbardo, his goal for the experiment was to see how good people react to being in a bad place. After receiving a grant from the U.S. Office of Naval Research, Zimbardo decided that the bad place for his experiment to take place in would be none other than a prison constructed in the basement of a psychology building on Stanford University's campus. Following the ad put up in the local newspaper, the experiment received over 75 applicants, who were all interviewed extensively by Zimbardo and his team of researchers. After ruling out candidates with psychological issues, disabilities, or drug use, 24 males were selected to participate and were assigned to either being a guard or a prisoner, which was decided by a coin flip. Soon after, on an early Sunday morning on August 14th, the prisoners were arrested at their homes by real police officers and were booked as if they were real criminals. Next, the prisoners were blindfolded and transported to the actual mock prison. Prisoners were then issued ID numbers in uniforms, which consisted of a smock, a heavy chain on the right ankle, rubber sandals, and a stocking cap made from women's pantyhose. Zimbardo's goal with the prisoners was to take away their individuality and give them a sense of anonymity. The prison guards, however, were given no real training. They were granted the liberty to do whatever they deemed fit to keep their prison running smoothly aside from violence. Guards were also supplied with khaki uniforms and dark sunglasses to avoid making eye contact with prisoners. The first day of the experiment came and went without any major incidents. On the second day, however, the prisoners staged a rebellion. They removed their caps, their ID numbers, and barricaded themselves within their cells. Still finding their footing, the guards on duty called in reinforcements. Unsure of how to get the prisoners out of their cells, the guards sprayed the rebelling prisoners with fire extinguishers, forcing them to back away from the door. They then removed the beds from the cells and stripped the prisoners down. After the failed rebellion, the guards' aggression towards the prisoners grew exponentially. They became more intimidating and began harassing the prisoners, making nearly everything besides breathing a privilege. Prisoners could be temporarily banned from eating or be forced to urinate and defecate in a bucket. On day three of the experiment, the prisoner dubbed number 8612 began to show erratic behavior. As an experience, it, it was unique. I've never screamed so loud in my life. Um, I've never been so upset in my life. And it was an experience of being out of control. After initially being denied to leave, he then spiraled into another manic episode resulting in his departure from the experiment. Something else the mock prison did to mimic a real prison was to host a visiting hour for parents to come and see their children. Parents were allotted 10 minutes with their sons, and several were concerned about their son's physical and mental well-being. Zimbardo claims that to combat this, he instead turned it around onto the parents and challenged them on if their son was strong enough to handle being in the experiment. As the next day and night passed, the guards' punishments and harassment of the prisoners began to escalate, even forcing some prisoners to clean toilets with their bare hands. On the sixth day of the experiment, Zimbardo decided to end it, even though it was intended to last for two weeks. According to Zimbardo, 
He ended the experiment after realizing how deep in the experiment he had gotten himself, to the point where he was forgetting his original role. Zimbardo's goal with his experiment was to showcase how an individual's personality can change when given positions of authority or lack thereof. While still controversial, the results of the experiment have become a grim landmark of psychological experiments and continue to be used in court cases dealing with prisoner abuse.